In my experience, organizations that use G Suite with Microsoft Windows devices generally have inadequate security when it comes to their Windows devices. And this can leave them very vulnerable to cyber criminal activity um, in regards to ransomware, phishing, hijacking, and data loss. Hi, I'm Adrian Cosman Jones, a Google Cloud partner, and I've created this video which will show you how you can secure your Windows uh, devices using G Suite. So organizations which are using G Suite um, with, combined with Windows devices generally lack in central management of these devices, uh, which is a big security flaw. So they're easy targets for cyber criminals, and cyber criminals will, will plan attacks for, for ransomware, uh, phishing, hijacking, and will attempt to breach your data and possibly sell it on the dark web. Um, another problem is if the devices aren't centrally managed, then it's very difficult to retrieve that data if it's lost or stolen. And password security is also very poor on these devices. So Google's come up with a solution for this, which is called the G Suite Enhanced Security for Windows 10. And what this does is it enables you to log in with your G Suite email account to your Windows 10 computer using a process called single sign-on. Um, and this even enables you to have much better uh, PC login security as you combine it with your multi-factor authentication, which you might already have with your G Suite account, which is which might require you to open up your phone and really prove that it's you, which will stop the hackers from getting in if they um, obtain your email address and password. So another feature is uh, Google's got their anti-hijacking and uh, suspicious logins. Um, so this is their algorithms which can sort of detect you know, what location, what login behaviors you might have and if they think it's a, a dodgy login or a hacker, um, then they'll prevent that login from happening as well. Um, so if you've got G Suite uh, Enterprise or G Suite Enterprise for Education, then you can actually configure a few more uh, security features. So you can centrally manage your Windows updates from G Suite Admin. So make sure all your Windows 10 devices are always up to date. And if they're not, you can push out updates, schedule when that will happen, um, and that type of thing. So you can also remote, remotely wipe uh, any data from a PC. So let's say if that PC is lost or stolen or uh, an employee or a contractor is no longer working from your organization, um, you can remotely wipe that data from that machine. This is really important for work from home environments. Um, and you can also push out some device configurations, so particular settings. Um, you might want to disable, let's say, USB ports um, on all your Windows 10 devices to make sure that no data can easily be extracted out of the organization. To get started, click on the links below and that'll take you to this page. Otherwise, you can just Google search, install Google Credential Provider for Windows. Scroll down on the page, click on this link here, the tools.google one. And this will give you the installation page. So you just download 64 or 32 bit version, depending on what version of operating system you're running on Windows. Once that's downloaded, you then need to open up in command prompt and run it as an administrator. So click on start, run, command prompt, go to the right directory. Uh, type in that file name uh, and then that installs. Once that's done, you then need to jump into registry editor to adjust some values, as you can see here. So click the start, reg edit. And navigate to this particular folder, which I'm already here. So there's only one registry uh, edit you really have to do to make it work. If you miss this step, then you won't be able to log in. Um, and that's to register what domain names you're allowing uh, to log onto this computer. You can actually have multiple domain names just by uh, entering a comma between them. So to do that, click on the uh, GCPW, go to new string value, uh, call it uh, domains, Allow to log in. 
right click modify and then just enter your domain names um, and if you've got multiple ones just put a comma with the other one after and they're your G Suite domains so once that's done you can uh, close registry edit otherwise you can modify a few of the other registry edit settings once you restart your computer you'll then be able to log in with your G Suite account However, when you log in, that will basically create a new uh, Windows profile for that particular user. Now, if you're already using that computer previously and you want all your settings, um, all that type of thing to come across, then you need to migrate your existing profile to the new G Suite profile. And to do that, you just click on this third tab here, and this will give you the instructions on how to do that. Um, there's a little bit to do. You've got to set it up in the, the admin console to, to recognize that account. Um, so just follow those, those steps. Um, however, if, if you're not too worried and you're happy to create a fresh new profile on that Windows machine, then you can yeah, re restart, log in, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So I've just restarted the computer and I've clicked on Add Work Account and it's asked for my email address, which I've put in. Um, and now I'll just choose, it's a G Suite account. I'll put in my password. And it's just asked for my uh, multi-factor authentication, um, which basically did the Google prompt on my mobile phone. And I had to click yes uh, to allow it. And I'll also click I agree here. So that's where the multi-factor authentication is very secure because it makes you uh, log into the computer with your phone, prevents hackers from getting in. And as you can see, it's creating a new uh, Windows profile. Uh, this will take a minute to set up. And here it is, uh, signed in with a new profile. So just complete the setup, get out of Edge. But now if I open up uh, Chrome, um, it should automatically link the data because of the single sign-on. Yes, I'll turn on the sync. Um, and there we go, I'm already logged in. So if I open up Gmail, um, it hasn't asked me to, to log in for the first time. And that will happen with all your your G Suite apps and other any and any other uh, single sign-on applications you integrate with G Suite as well. So one of the security features in G Suite is to allow or deny particular users to access G Suite um, on on their devices. So if you've got it configured to to this setting, um, your administrator will get uh, an email like this saying new device approval request, and then you need to log into the admin console and approve it. The end user will get an email like this, us, um, basically saying that uh, it's pending and waiting for the administrator to approve it. If the administrator, the administrator doesn't approve it, then that user can't log in in the future. So to do that, you can basically just log into the admin console. You can click on your nine dots and go to uh, admin. Once in the admin console, go to devices, uh, endpoints, and here you can see pending approvals. Uh, this one here is a current one, less than an hour ago, Adrian's device. Uh, then you can basically choose if you want to approve it or just leave it pending or to delete it. So I'll approve this one. So you can see some details and modify some settings uh, for your users and devices from this screen. You can just click on a device name here, which is a computer. Uh, you can see that it's last sync date, um, operating system version, um, you can see if it's up to date. And here it gives you some, some options as well. You can sign the user out. Um, you can wipe the account, wipe the device. Um, so let's say if, if it was a work from home environment, and that user is no longer in the company, um, this particular computer, you can, you can remove all the G Suite data from it and remove the G Suite access as well. Uh, so it's quite powerful. Now, if you're using G Suite Enterprise, you get more features to customize your desktop environments. 
So you have to go back to devices. Okay, under settings, we've got Windows settings. First of all, you just need to enable uh, desktop management. If it's not already enabled, click on that, enable it. Um, so here we've got some other things. We can do uh, set the account settings. So when the users first log in, you know, what type of permission will they have on that device? Um, a good idea is to set them as a standard user. This can um, highly prevent ransomware and other malware from installing on a machine without the user knowing. Whereas if they were a local administrator, these types of things can install automatically if they click the wrong link. So I highly recommend a standard user. Um, a couple of other things, you can specify the Windows update, um, how they get deployed um, and the time that it gets deployed. Uh, so there's quite a bit of configuration around there. So to make sure that all your Windows devices are up to date. Uh, BitLocker settings. So this is uh, hard drive encryption. If this is a very good feature in case, let's say a laptop or a desktop was stolen, um, even though there's passwords on the devices, uh, people could still extract the hard drive and get the data off them or hack into them other ways. Whereas if you've got BitLocker uh, encryption set up, it actually encrypts a hard drive. So even if they pull the hard drive out, it becomes extremely hard, if not impossible, to get the data out of that machine because uh, of because of this encryption. Uh, and finally, you've got some custom settings here, um, and this is where you can sort of set up custom uh, attributes to kind of registry settings. So one could be um, to to disable the USB ports. So I'll provide you with this link, but here are some uh, custom settings for Windows 10. Um, and here we've got the one to disable USB hard drives. So basically just copy these values, put them into here, and then apply it to which users or groups. Um, and that'll automatically push that out to all those Windows devices to, for that particular setting. So that pretty much wraps up uh, this video, which shows you how to set up Windows 10 devices with single sign-on um, and G Suite. So I highly recommend using G Suite Enterprise, especially if you don't have a, a Windows server or Active Directory network to manage your security of your devices. Um, very powerful tools to keep all your devices very secure and safe, as well as your G Suite and other uh, cloud applications.